Now remember, the original question of the molar volume of a gas lab was asking us to find the volume of one mole of gas at standard temperature and pressure. So we added magnesium to hydrochloric acid and formed magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. Now it is the hydrogen gas that we are concerned with in this particular problem. We collected the hydrogen gas using water displacement. With this comes the unavoidable problem of water vapor contaminating our hydrogen gas sample. So we actually have two gases, water vapor and hydrogen gas, in our collection tube. Both of these gases are contributing to the pressure and volume of the gas inside the tube, and so in order for us to accurately calculate the volume of our gas, we need to get rid of the water vapor. Of course, we can't physically separate the two, but lucky for us, we know that the total pressure inside the tube is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of the two gases that are present. If we know the total pressure and we know the pressure of the water vapor, then we can solve for the pressure of the hydrogen gas. Our total pressure is the same as the room pressure that we measured on the day of the lab. The water vapor pressure is a constant that has been measured in a lab before. So to find the partial pressure of the water vapor in your container, you just use the temperature of the room. If the room temperature is between those listed, you do not round. You need to find the closest pressure for your given temperature. So now we know the actual volume of the hydrogen in our container. Our lab is asking us to find the volume of one mole of gas at standard temperature and pressure. Now chances are that we are not at standard temperature and pressure when we do the lab, so we need to determine what our measured volume would be if we had done the lab at standard temperature and pressure. We can use the gas laws relationship to convert our measured volume to the volume at standard temperature and pressure. Since we measured our pressure in millimeters of mercury, we can use 760 millimeters of mercury as our standard pressure. Standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius, but remember that when we are dealing with proportions, we need to convert our temperatures to Kelvin. So we use 273 Kelvin as our standard temperature. This tells us what our measured volume of hydrogen gas would be if we had measured it at standard temperature and pressure. So now we know our collected volume at standard temperature and pressure. If we want to know the volume in one mole of gas, we need to compare the volume we have measured and the number of moles that we have in our container to one mole. This means that we need to know how many moles we have in our measured volume. Well, we have a vague idea of how much magnesium we used, so we could start there. We started out with a strip of magnesium ribbon. Because we are using such a small amount, our lab balances would not be precise enough to give us a good reading on the mass. So we measured the mass of a one meter long piece of magnesium ribbon and found it to be 1.31 grams. Now obviously we didn't use a one meter length, but we did measure the length of the piece that we did use. We can use the relationship of one meter of magnesium to determine the mass of the smaller length. Once we determine the mass of our magnesium ribbon, we can use our molar mass to determine the number of moles of magnesium that we used. We know that magnesium was our limiting reactant because all of it was used up in the reaction. So we can use the one to one ratio in our balanced equation to determine the number of moles of hydrogen in our sample. We know that volume and the number of particles have a directly proportional relationship. So finally, we can use the ratio of our measured amount of moles and our adjusted volume to find the volume in one mole. So here is a sample set of data. First things first, let's find the partial pressure of the hydrogen gas inside our collection tube. Our measured room pressure is 737 millimeters of mercury, and the room temperature is 26 degrees Celsius. Looking at our chart, we find that the water vapor pressure at that temperature is 25.2 millimeters of mercury. We can subtract the water vapor pressure from the room pressure and that gives us a partial pressure of hydrogen gas of 711.8 millimeters of mercury. So now that we know the pressure of our hydrogen gas, we can adjust our measured volume to the volume it would be if we had performed the lab at standard temperature and pressure. Our initial pressure was 711.8 millimeters of mercury. Our measured volume was 48.0 milliliters 
and our initial temperature was 26 degrees Celsius, or 299 when converted to Kelvin. We want to convert to a new volume at 760 millimeters of mercury and 273 Kelvin. So in the end, we get an adjusted volume of 42.50 milliliters of hydrogen gas. Now that we know the volume of our hydrogen gas at standard temperature and pressure, we need to find out how many moles that volume contains. To find this, we need to go back to the amount of magnesium used in our reaction. We found the mass of a 1 meter length of magnesium ribbon to be 1.31 grams. We know that any two measurements set equal to each other can be set up as a direct proportion. Our sample of magnesium ribbon measured at a length of 3.13 centimeters, which is 0.0313 meters. Solving this proportion, we find a mass of 0.041003 grams of magnesium. Now that we have the mass of magnesium that was used in the experiment, we can determine how many moles that represents by using the molar mass of magnesium. So now we have the number of moles of magnesium that completely reacted in our experiment. Since hydrogen forms in a one-to-one -one ratio with magnesium, that also tells us the number of moles of hydrogen that was produced. And now, we can get back to our original question of what is the volume of one mole of a gas at standard temperature and pressure. We have adjusted our measured volume to the volume at STP, and we have determined the number of moles collected in that volume. Since volume and the number of particles are directly proportional, we determine the volume of our gas if we were to only have one mole instead. In the end, we find that one mole of hydrogen gas has a volume of 25,190 milliliters. So according to our data, one mole of a gas at standard temperature and pressure will have a volume of 25,190 milliliters. Now this procedure has been done before under much more controlled circumstances, and the accepted value for the volume of one mole of gas is 22,400 milliliters. So we want to determine our percent error. We take our value that we found in our lab and subtract the accepted value before dividing by the accepted value. And we end up with a percent error of 12%. So your analysis should include a very brief description of how you arrived at your value. You probably have two or three pages of calculations and you can refer back to that in your description. You also need to talk about your percent error. How close were you? For this lab, anything under about a 20% error is really doing pretty good. So if you have anything over 20%, you need to explain what you might have done better.